Now, hello, I'm Jerry McKee, and we are Monday here at uh, Pitt's Music Studio, and you're going to have a good treat here because you're going to hear some expert advice and how you can uh, come and, uh, if you're into music or you want to be into music, you want to learn how to voice, you want to learn how to play, these guys have got it going on, so you'll be able to come up and, uh, and talk to them. We'll tell you where they're at. They're actually in Clinton, and I'm doing a couple of little things here so like I always have to do and I uh, hope you watch the Calypse Calypse what about Eclipse how's that okay mm -hmm. not Eclipse it's kind of like I'm going to butcher this guy's name in a minute I know it mm -hmm. but we'll be back in just a minute right after this message from our sponsor La Fagada go there and eat you some great Mexican food they're right on the highway in Union South Carolina La Fagada Mexican restaurant 441 North Duncan Bypass, Union, South Carolina, 864-429-4043. La Fagala, your family Mexican restaurants, has appetizers, child's plates, salads and soups, sandwiches and desserts, sizzling fajitas, Texas fajitas, shrimp fajitas. Also, they have great chicken, polos asado, chicken tenders, polo loco, and many more. If you like seafood, they have that also. Fish tacos, shrimp cocktail. They have many combinations that you can choose from in different price range. Matter of fact, they have 35 different ones. If you're a vegetarian, that's right, they can come accommodate you also. Lunch menu, they have the Speedy Gonzales and about 13 others that you can make a combination with. That's La Fagada. La Fagada Mexican Restaurant. 441 North Duncan Bypass and Union, South Carolina. Okay, we're back, and uh, we're we'll going to have to get these guys up and back, too. Here we go. Like I said, we're right here at Pitt's Music Studio. I want to let you kind of little, see a little bit back there uh, in the studio part of it. And uh, let me see my... There we go. All right. Now that you got to see some good Mexican food, now we're going to talk to these guys right here. Let me get their faces on here. And we got Chandler, we got uh, Ricky, <laughs> and we got uh, Randy, and we've got. Kamati. Kamati. My wife's going to be so proud. <laughs> <laughs> And these guys right here makes uh, the wheels turn a little bit. And Chandler, I want to ask you, how, how did you get into music? And what are some of the things you do as far as uh, at, at Pitt's music? Um, I am the music technician. Um, and how I got into music was, well, since I've been in my mother's womb, you know, my father used to play the piano for her and my mother plays the piano as well. So it's like, I grew up into being musically like inclined with things, so, so like. So your so your dad and mom played the piano mm -hmm. too. Uh, they sing. Like, oh yes. Yeah. Uh, now most musicians, uh, when I, I talk to them, when they talk you know about the parents and the music like that, uh, they have some grounds in the church. Mm -hmm. I grew up in the church. Yeah, and Randy, do you? Um, yes, um, yes, I'm a minister of music in church. Oh, I try to you are a minister of music. Mm -hmm. Yes, and what church is that? Um, um, currently, I'm the minister of music at White Plain Baptist Church oh, okay. in Mount Deal, South Carolina. Oh, great, mm -hmm. great. Now, 
I've gathered that uh, every one of you and grew up into either church or your parents was playing music. My wife plays the piano. Yeah. I can't play nothing. Mm -hmm. uh, I just play a radio or something. Mm -hmm. But uh, and when you got started out, did was it something that you just wanted to do? Because I know a lot of times you know the parents says you're going to play the piano, and they say I don't want to play the piano or, or anything <laughs> like that. Uh, what uh, did, did did your mom and dad teach you this, or did you have a uh, okay. uh, instructor? Um, well, um, we're kind of gifted. My dad, he played some, and so well, actually, I started playing um, maybe like at seven years old. So me and my twin brother um, was interested in music, and we was um, wanting to play. And so my mom put us in piano lessons for um, probably about a year. And then our piano teacher finally said we didn't need piano lessons, so we stopped taking piano lessons and we just started playing and playing and playing. We just started playing by ear and yeah, we started yeah. growing. Yeah, that's what yeah. I was going to ask you. Was you, was you at the time playing by ear and when your instructor was here you play by ear like it? Did, yes. Did, like started, she said, she couldn't do anything, right? Yes, because <laughs> we started reading music and she was teaching us read, to read the music right. and we would never look at the music. We were just playing it by ear. You know, after we played it one time, we didn't have to look at the music anymore. So wow, that's a gift. Isn't it? Yeah, it's, a, it it's really truly mm -hmm. a gift. Now, when uh, you, now, do you read music now? Of course. Yes, I do read music now, and I also teach to read music. Oh, okay. But I also teach to play by ear too, as well. Ah. Mm -hmm. well that's good. Now, I want to ask each one what, what instruments, what uh, what are all the types of instruments you play. Uh, yeah. um, I play the piano, the drums the guitar. I played the clarinet when I was in middle school and I kind of picked up on it. So those are about the only ones that I know so now, far. Now it's kind of hard to, to, of course you're going from one instrument to the other and I know you, you play by ear also. Mm -hmm. And uh, is, is it kind of hard to, uh, like you used to play the piano, so well, okay, I want to play the drums. Okay, I want to play the clarinet. I want to play this right here. Is, is it different or is it just kind of the same but just a little different things to push i feel like it's the same but mm -hmm. you know it's just a different instrument you just get good at it and mm -hmm. practice is a key thing right. and practice. Mm -hmm. yeah yeah and um i mainly play the um, piano keyboard um you know changing instruments and sounds so um learn and also i can play any instrument that i can find a scale because i play by ear so if i can find the scale on any in instrument and um, know then I can actually play any song on any instrument. So when you play by ear, you play by sound, you play by scale. So as long as I can find the scale, I can pretty much play you. Wow, I need to come, would you teach me how to do that? <laughs> <laughs> of course, yeah. with my hearing going like that, you might uh, <laughs> be a little <clears throat> sour notes there. Yeah. And what, what yeah, I can play the piano and keyboard. And I'm learning to play the drum right now. I'm not really that good at it, but I can tell that since I play like the keyboard, I know the beat. Right. So I've been working on playing the drums too. And to me, drums would be kind of like a little, little harder because you, you've got to add some beats to it. You've got to, you've yeah. got to really kind of mm -hmm. know the song a little bit and, and pick up in it. That, that's just my, my thinking. Yeah. yeah. So uh, now when, you start playing at what age? What age? I mean, I gotta ask this. You guys are young anyway, so. Um, well, I started playing maybe like what six or seven. Six or seven years. Yeah. Six or seven. Yeah. I think I started early. What, by, about five. By, about five. By, I think that was about five. five. You were sitting on the keyboard playing. early. Oh when wow! He was a little. Mm, yeah. And I started teaching my son. Of course, he he stopped playing, but he does know how to play his scales and some chords and stuff, so he kind of got away from it. But he's really going to get back into music. So he's, get, like so he's got a good teacher, I mean. Good yes, teacher. yes. He's got the whole thing in there to kind of show you how to do it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Man, that, that, that is neat. And this is a beautiful studio you have here. And, uh, Thank you so uh, much. I have this kind of little flashback over there. That's some, just some of the equipment. This ain't all the equipment. It's just a little minor of it. Uh, that you have back here in the back, and uh, was, was it? I, I know you're playing all these right here, but it's a little bit more detailed when you're uh, mixing music, mm -hmm. uh, because looking at the, at the key, not the keyboard, but the uh, mixing board, mm -hmm. when you got all of these different. <laughs> 
uh, yeah. buttons and knobs and I have a small one at church I can mess with a little bit like that and just a little bit but when you mix music is it difficult to do that or? Um, well how I learned as far as mixing is digital now like on the computer but I haven't fully tapped into like actually physically using the knobs and mixing it like hands on uh -huh. but as far as mixing it takes sound you have to hear what you're doing and what they're doing and see if stuff fits right in certain places or if it just sounds complete like the sound in the music. Now you do uh, a, a digital board also? Mm -hmm. oh, okay. and, and, uh, on the software. Yeah and I kind of want to speak on the digital the boards. Um, yes um, the old school are the boards that you see back there. Right. Many people don't even use a lot of boards anymore because technology has really changed Everything is done digitally on the computer. So, um, but you know, there are still studios that actually use totally board, you know, the analog style, so. Now, which one do you prefer? I mean, to me, I'm, I'm an old school type guy. I, I still like to hear the albums and the sh like that. I mean, <laughs> yeah. They're coming back, of course, it will, you know, big time. But I, I kind of like some of the old school stuff because I, I love technology too, mm. but it seemed like Sometimes, not all times, it right. kind of takes away that, that particular sound. It does. And the, I love the old school boards, too. So, you know, it, it does have a different sound. Mm -hmm. It's totally different. So. Now, you, you guys teach a lot of folks here. Uh, a lot of, uh, I've seen on your uh, uh, Facebook page, yes. uh, kids coming in and yeah. they get your star students. And yes. like it, is it difficult to teach a small child or, or an adult versus one. Which one is more challenging, I would say? The one that's challenging is an adult, you know, because um, a child really like soaks up information really fast and, you know, their, their minds are different. Um, but an older person can learn to play as well, you know, but it takes an older person just a little bit more time. But the um, young kids learn just like that. Yeah, they got mm -hmm. their little fresh minds and stuff. Yes. Uh, I know myself, uh, I always liked, I mean, I would play guitar, I would, you know, would play some music like that, but uh, I, it, it takes some discipline, it takes some uh, mm -hmm. wanting to do this. Uh, playing the guitar, mm -hmm. uh, y'all play that also? Um, I don't play the guitar. Uh, I'm starting the guitar now. So. Oh, mm -hmm. how's your fingers? <laughs> is it, is it, They're... You have to learn like certain notes, but it's not the same as playing the keyboard. It's like you're messing with screens. So, okay. is it rough on your finger? I always heard um, build up calluses. I wouldn't say that it's rough, but I would rather use like a pick to actually yeah. use like scrub the you know right. screens. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, 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 I've seen some guys that really can tear. Yeah, one you up. can get your fingers, you know, sliced a little bit with those. <laughs> Strings. Yeah. yeah, like I said, my, my wife, she plays the piano, and, and we, we have a pianist at church, that, that, and it what amazes me is that how they can read the notes and play the piano and sing it at the same time. Yeah. And mm -hmm. that, that's a talent. Yes, yeah, so, yeah. And, and I noticed y'all was doing that. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. uh, at the university. Mm -hmm. And is it... Uh, it's just hard for me to get my mind to concentrate on one thing here or here. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'll lose my place right here once in a while. Mm -hmm. And just to kind of, do uh, you have to keep yourself in a rhythm of that? Or, or do, do you look at the keyboard when you play? Uh, yeah. No. Once you learn how to play the keyboard, then you don't actually have to look at the keys because you know where all the notes are. It's kind of like typing. Once you learn to type and you know where the, the um, letters are, you know, playing the keys is similar. You know, you learn the feel of the notes and you um, can feel your way around. So when you singing and playing at the same time, yeah, it does take coordination. And it's amazing. It's an amazing feel because one part of your mind is thinking about your hands. And then the other part of your mind is thinking about the um, song and the lyrics. And then your mind puts all that together and you're able to do it at the same time. Well, whose idea was it to come up with Pitt's Music Studio? Um, well, I started Pitt's Music 
um, as like my email um, probably about um, 15 years ago mm-hmm. and um, so we just decided to name it Pitts Music Studio okay. yeah because we've been using the email address yeah. Yeah. so, so, so you, you yeah. got together and here you're on Main Street uh, in Clinton mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and uh, had the grand opening and mm-hmm. uh, that last was it last year or this year uh, it was last year last year mm-hmm. and uh, and so did y'all was just sitting around just messing with business hey let's open up a studio well, the story on that, well, actually, um, I started Pitts Music Studio actually in my backyard, you know, in a building, you know, it was a small building, so that was a, originally Pitts Music Studio. And then um, over the years, you know, we uh, decided to make it bigger, you know, and my, my dream and turn into our dream were to um, open, you know, a studio up to the public, you know, into the community. So uh, God blessed us, you know, and and we we um, got around some good people here, you know, and we um, found this building here downtown, and we made it happen. Well, yeah. it, look, it, it looks great in here, it really yeah. does. I mean, I walk in, you got like TVs here, you got music over here, you got drums over here, keyboards and stuff, and of course everything in the back there. Mm-hmm. It, it really really looks good. And uh, Thank you. How, how's the, the the people take on that? Are they excited for you and, and really supported you here? It, it seems like Clinton really supports their uh, downtown businesses. And, uh, yes. And, yes. And, uh, yes. We uh, have a lot of support, you know, and um, the city um, of Clinton support us amazingly. Um, we have a lot of support from the community as well. It was different at first because um, I think this is um, one of the um, – first openly studio, you know, like downtown Clinton. So it excited everybody at first and, and now everybody has really got gotten used to it. So mm-hmm. now when you're uh when you have someone in your studio for says that wants to uh, uh put out a music album or a C D or uh or you CDs mm-hmm. anymore, uh do you have like a, a soundproof room, or do you have? Yes. Okay. Yeah, and the camera is on the the, the sound booth there. With, with the one doing it. With, with the one. Okay. Okay. Because mm-hmm. I I've seen on your uh, slide there, the lady singing, and mm-hmm. and, and, and in the back. Sitting. Mm-hmm. So it's a. Uh, because I always wondered, you know, because you see them on TV and. Of course, you know, TV's Hollywood, mm-hmm. and you see all yes. these different things, and uh, uh, when you have them in that sound booth like that, of course, you can hear them from this side mm-hmm. here, and does it take a lot of takes to, it just, I guess it depends on the artist or mm-hmm. to really get it honed in? Mm-hmm. I mean, mm-hmm. It does. Some people, they like to hear certain <laughs> stuff, and if they don't, like it they'll have to redo it so that meaning that they would have to redo that certain part and then i take it off the screen then they record it again it is all songs don't come out just perfect right off the rip you just it takes time to make a song so yeah so it's not it like to, the hollywood movie shows <laughs> that that easy and simple oh, that's, oh no that's, no that's, that's i mean way. it could be that way but <laughs> it's well i i know that it's uh uh, difficult. I've, I've shot some commercials, a so one-minute commercial, uh, some of these uh, politicians' campaign. You would think that uh, you know, they are talking to just the gab, 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 but usually the camera gets in front of them, they just freeze up. And I've done a minute, a minute and a half commercial. It's taken two hours <laughs> you know, to get it done uh, because it's almost like that uh, commercial that comes on uh, with the emu and Doug. And the guy gets out there and he always blubs up everything. <laughs> but uh, mm-hmm. now, when you have the finished product, you, you probably kind of know if that's a take or not, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because it, it, just listening to it. And do you have some amateurs that come in that, that kind of wants to try the same? Mm-hmm. Yes, we do. Amateurs. We have people that want to come in and try different things that they have, that they say they always want to do. And we give them feedback instead of just letting them leave here feeling some type of way about it. Well, I guess
guess everybody heard the train go by. It's yeah. time for a commercial. Let's just go to the commercial. We'll be right back. Gava Mexican Restaurant, 441 North Duncan Bypass, Union, South Carolina, 864-429-4043. La Pagala, your family Mexican restaurants, has appetizers, child's plates, salads and soups, sandwiches, and desserts. Sizzling fajitas, Texas fajitas, shrimp fajitas. Also, they have great chicken, polo asado, chicken tenders, polo loco, and many more. If you like seafood, they have that also, fish tacos, shrimp cocktail. They have many combinations that you can choose from in different price range. Matter of fact, they have 35 different ones. If you're a vegetarian, that's right, they can come accommodate you also. Lunch menu, they have the Speedy Gonzales and about 13 others that you can make a combination with. That's La Fagada. La Fagada Mexican Restaurant, 441 North Duncan Bypass and Union, South Carolina, 429-4043. Okay, we are back, and you probably didn't hear a word. <laughs> we probably did. It, it picks up pretty good, but yeah. also picked up the train. Uh, we're talking about uh, amateurs coming in, mm -hmm. and uh, if someone wants to come in and and try to make fun, you know, mm -hmm. we hear and, and we we've done karaoke. I'll tell you about. It. I used to do karaoke, and, mm -hmm. and I and I've heard some some of the great singers that did. It's never just never did want to or or seek to think that they were good enough to, to mm -hmm. put that voice in. It takes and, and you guys run, run across in going out and uh, setting up sound systems and doing these things, her mm -hmm. people said, wow, where, where, where'd that come from? Where, where's she been? Where yeah, she been? yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And so we do run into a lot of amateurs and I keep everybody encouraged. Even if you're not the best singer, I always just kind of encourage you you know, you can you can learn and you can get better. You can get better more over time with practice and stuff like that. So I always try to keep everybody encouraged about singing. You can turn a person that's not so good at singing. You with a uh, vocal training, you can you can turn them into a great singer. And, that, and that's mm -hmm. something y'all you know, offer also yes. is, is yeah. vocal. I mean, yes. vocal coach. Yes, mm -hmm. I and, do vocal coaching. And and that that's very very important people, especially as a singer, mm -hmm. because uh, they think, uh, you know, we all watch American Idol and all this right here, you know, we know that's Hollywood stuff too, mm -hmm. but uh, they encourage us and when we hear something in there that's not right, but you can build on that by a little coaching. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, who, is it all three of you, or four of you do the vocal coach? I'm the yeah. vocal coach, so uh, yeah, I'm the You're one that does the vocal, vocal coach. coach. Yeah. And I help out some. Okay, so uh, is, tell me a little bit about vocal coaching. Okay, vocal coaching is basically just, um, you start out with like the vocal vowels, the English vowels are E-A-I-O-U, uh -huh. the vocal vowels, vowels are E-A-I-O-U, and you teach them how to sing the vocal vowels just like they speak the vocal vowels. So um, vocal coaching is just like, um, doing um, vowels and um, diction and just um, basically just training training pronouncing the voice, words. pronouncing your words. Um, and it's, the main thing is breathing to sing. If you learn how to breathe and sing at the same time, then um, you're doing good. Because you have to breathe while you're singing. You don't ever hold your breath when you're singing. And okay. just take songs and you learn how to do runs and just training the voice. Yes. Oh, okay. And mm -hmm. you, you know, mentioned the AIU, uh, it's an old Andy Griffin episode with Barney. Yes. Uh, he could sing a lick, but he'd go around and going A E I O U and I'm hearing all this <laughs> singing. And yeah. he comes in and says, Hey, Barney's sick back there. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, and then that's where I heard that from. So, hey, I'm glad yeah. cleared up because I, I didn't yeah. know that was part of a uh, vocal coach. Yes. And, and the amazing thing to me is that. The vocal, vocal lesson you've got here, uh, private for one hour session, $20 per hour per week. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, that is that is fantastic price there. Yes. And someone that can sing a little bit and wants to come in and, and get better, that, that, that is great. Uh, now, 
as they go along and you hear, are they getting better? Uh, is it more time to, to home it in? Uh, it just depends on what the, what the person wants. To do. Yeah, it's really depending on what the person wants, yeah. Um, but I do offer more, you know, I start off with like an hour session, right. you know, and then over time, if they feel like they want to get more um, time in, we can do more um, vocal time or more uh, piano time. So, okay. Now, yeah. we, when mm -hmm. you're doing some of the vocals, uh, do you record some of it to let them hear it, feedback? Because a lot of people really think that, you know, they can, because I'm having to do that, see, mm -hmm. and, and really cut mm -hmm. uh, because of the training or or because they want to do it their style, but mm -hmm. and you play the recording back, they says, oh, uh, mm -hmm. even with video, when they play it back, says, my wife would do a cooking show for her, she says, I sound like a southern hick. I said, well, you are. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I said, you're a southern cook. Mm -hmm. And I do advise all of the students to actually do the recording because um, when you hear yourself, when you start liking yourself on the recording, then that gives you more confidence that you know then you understanding that you're getting better but that's the hardest thing for anybody to do is to hear themselves on a recording so i do recommend doing the recording yeah and i also do the recording too so and and recording you can kind of help enhance your voices uh, right and when you're putting now when you come in singing uh do you happen to sing a cappello first or Yes, they uh, start out with um, doing the a cappella, and then I start doing the music too as well. So, okay, because yeah. it is, and you guys know that to walk in and you got a band there and, and you're going to sing with that band, and that band never sung, had you sing before. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's the same thing with key, with karaoke. You yeah. don't know the, the song that good, or and your voice is, it, it, it's hard. Yes. And so I just wonder if you started out acapella to uh, mm -hmm. I guess to train their voice right yes mm -hmm. yes D do you tell them to take anything I know years ago they used to have you know you eat a lemon <laughs> <laughs> yeah um, I advise just drinking warm water because if you um, drink like cold water it kind of freezes the vocal cords uh, put your vocal cords in shock so I do advise that and lemons help open the voice up too as well yeah lemons help Open your voice. Okay. Well, I maybe talked about the cold because when I try to sing, mm -hmm. uh, I have something cold there to drink. You know, it's kind of like this. I, I, didn't, <laughs> I didn't know this. I need to. Yeah, it freezes the vocal cords. Yeah. Make them Get some buffer. warm water. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Well, that's, that's, that's good to know. Uh, yeah. Now, we went a little bit with recording and mastering. What, what, is, is that two different? Think recording and mastering? Um, recording. recording and mastering, there are different. Recording is you're putting their vocals onto the software and mastering is you're mixing their vocals to the music or mixing it to how it's supposed to sound fully, like fully clear. Now, uh, when a person's put the voice with it and you're mixing different beats and different musical instruments into it. Do you record all that separate and kind of put it together? Um, mostly when people come record, they have their own music behind it. So mm -hmm. the only thing that I would be mixing is their vocals and putting effects onto their vocals to make it clearer okay. and sound right. different in the speakers. But um, to um, answer your question, it is done on different separate tracks. Yeah. So okay. you um, put the vocals on one track, you put music on one track, you put ad lib on one track, and then when you mix it, you put it all together. Yeah, mm -hmm. and it creates one complete sound. And you can do that digitally now, right? Mm -hmm. Digitally. I used to do it with a 16 uh, channel uh, reel, reel. Reel, yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you remember that? And I remember the reel days. Yeah. That's been years ago. But what is custom beats? Uh, custom beats or music that I create. So I, I make beats as well. So it's like I produce music and, and create, your own create my own music and create music for others. Okay. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of, because I don't know what, what beats are. Okay, so I mean, beats are like... My wife eats them, but other than that... Uh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so like beats are 
it's the music behind the vocals. Okay. So like, it's a creation. Like some people buy their beats offline and and they use them offline, but I create them myself. So like, I made the music from my mind. Mm -hmm. you know? Was that kind of like what you were doing uh, uh, when I was in here setting up like that, you just playing some music? I was playing that? something. I created a song to one yeah. of those songs I was That was playing. pretty. I mean, that was, mm -hmm. to me, relaxing. I was going to go sit down and take a nap. <laughs> I mean, it was mm -hmm. real mm -hmm. nice and relaxing. Mm -hmm. Wow, okay. And and you do these uh, for people also. Mm -hmm. uh, they, they want some, they, do they give you an idea of what they... That's, well, that's when it comes to like when you're sitting down and communicate with them how they want to have certain stuff done and you just put it together like you put both their your minds and their minds together to create something yeah oh. learn mm -hmm. something here today mm -hmm. i tell you uh now i, I know that y'all have the in-house studio mm -hmm. uh, but y'all also provide another service which uh, when someone says hey I need uh, you to come to perform, or mm -hmm. uh, you, or, or come and sit up for a band, and you have mm -hmm. that capability yes. also. Yeah. And uh, what what is a, a a typical piece of a band? I mean, you got seven piece band. And I got a friend of mine that uh, that is a ten called Ten Times Band, mm -hmm. and they've got ten people in the band, mm -hmm. and uh, so. so do, do you set up the whole sound for them if they ask or? Okay, um, we can actually set up the PA system and um, the whole sound and we can um, also do the drums and the keyboard. Um, and then like if we do an event that's, you know, looking for a whole band, we will go outside and reach out to someone that um, plays the lead guitar or the bass, you know, and they actually come in and play along with us. You know, and then that actually created the whole band. But we also just do just a normal setup like keyboard, drums, PA system, right. you know, and we do music. And a lot for like weddings, mm -hmm. uh, programs, funerals, and things like that. Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. And, uh, well, you know, I, I know the fees on that, of course, it depends on the event, how big it yes. is, mm -hmm. and what it does there, because I mm -hmm. understand that because you can't just... Uh, come up and say, oh, yeah, I can do that for five bucks. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and now you have uh, uh, children mm -hmm. that come here mm -hmm. and uh, that you teach. Mm -hmm. And and I think somebody, uh, just like when you're talking about you went and had piano playing and the teacher said, hey, well, you know, you don't need no teacher. Mm -hmm. Have you seen that? Like a prodigy child? Yeah. Um, yes, I have a student. Um, his name is um, Trey Simmons, and um, he's amazing. And, um, you know, and I'm coaching him and teaching him, but he has a gift. So um, it's a breeze teaching him. I'm basically just um, telling him stuff, you know, and just giving him just a little bit of knowledge. But he has the gift to play. Wow. That's, Very, that, that, yeah. that's great. Okay. Now, mm -hmm. Do you have a, a recital type you do with your students yet, or is it? Uh, um, is well, it, when it's coming up, it's probably going to be in the fall of this year. You know, I am going to do one for all of my students, so it'll be coming up this fall. Yeah, so stay tuned for that. Okay, and uh, and you got I see some other little social events that you do too. It's, mm -hmm. uh, uh, we, we, I think we talked a little bit about that uh, a teen social. What, 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 what's something? Okay, um, a teen so social um, is like when um, teens just come in and be social, listen to their music, and just just being social. Yeah. Um, you know, maybe watch like TV. yeah, watch TV. Just, just kind of hang around. Yeah, like just kind of hang school, around together. Or After school, like that. yeah, and just listen to that music and well, I, I, I eat. Think yeah, I, I think that is so neat because we got so many teens and stuff that mm -hmm. don't know where to go or have right, a place to go to right. some mentors. Right. And I know you're talking about uh, the, the t I've looked at the TVs and, and you're talking about the games they, yes. they can play on it. Yeah, they can come in and play the um, PlayStation, you know, just being social. Yeah. And, um, and I like that idea, you know, because, you know, it's giving them something to do. Okay. It's so many things. You know, going on, you know, in keep the them out of trouble. Industry. Yeah, keep yeah. them out of trouble. Yeah, so to give them something to do. Well, I commend you on that. Positive. That, 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 that is fantastic that, that mm -hmm. 
you take it upon yourself to take these, these kids and be a mentor. I know that some yes. of them are just blown away about some of them, the, how you produce music and right. how you play uh, these instruments and, and, and getting some advice there. Cause they, you know, a lot of these kids don't know, uh, you know, sometimes we don't know what their home life is about, right. but they're, they have some hidden talents there that uh, that you can bring out mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and and it, to me that is that's what we got to do we got to pay attention to that and yeah. you're in the perfect place here because music i don't know too many kids that does not like music every every kid loves music yeah yeah and it, it's yeah. different different styles of music different styles yeah and mm -hmm. now what is your main style of music uh, channel uh, um, that, that you like the most you talking about like my genre of music? Yes, genre music. Um, I I make my music under like R and B, um, gospel, something smooth, you know. Oh, okay. Mm. Any Motown? Um, <laughs> he I don't know all it. that. Um, <laughs> I, he well, I'm going, now, I'm going older school than you are now. <laughs> uh, <laughs> a friend of mine called Motown Bobby. Mm -hmm. uh, his uh, uncle is. Uh, uh, Smokey Robinson, mm -hmm. and he, he lives in Union, mm -hmm. and he plays a lot of Motown music, and he DJs a little bit, mm -hmm. and uh, he calls himself Motown Bobby. Mm -hmm. but, uh, I, I love the Motown sound. Mm -hmm. I, I love the old music. Mm -hmm. like the Temptations. Yeah, the yeah. Mm -hmm. I was ready, and all you know, just you just can't. My wife and I was uh, listening to some the other night. We're just telling them, you know they just don't make the music like they did in the old school. Right, so, right. I think everybody says that in yeah. one sense. Yeah. Now, what, what's your genre? Um, well, my major is like gospel music. I, I love gospel music. Um, um, but now I will do um, like R&B music and stuff. And we um, do weddings and stuff. So uh, now, you know, it, it's, it's different. You know, they doing like pop music at weddings. Now they are doing some R and B music at weddings too as well. So everything has changed. You know, it's not a lot of love songs anymore. It's it's pretty much like R and B music. And if you know Christians, you know, do do gospel music at right. weddings and stuff. So yeah, but I love gospel music. <coughs> yeah, about Ricky. yeah, yeah, and gospel is my favorite that I do. Well, yeah. the gospel music, I, I, I love gospel music now, and I like uh, I like some of the older, and I like uh, I like some of the new. I, I, because mm -hmm. it's uh, a, a more upbeat, more spiritual, yeah. I think. Yeah. If, if you can move somebody with music, and you can. You can move, to me, you can, I used to DJ the nightclub many years ago, mm -hmm. and I have to watch the music uh, play when we get into the night. I had to go too slow, one maybe a little faster, mm -hmm. too slow, like mm -hmm. it, to bring the crowd down. But, People, music can move people. It can yes, move them into yeah, anger right. or it can move them into yeah. love of somebody. Yeah. And uh, I, I did uh, one wedding that uh, they didn't want any uh, words, but just the music. The the instrumental off. they want. Oh, that's it. Talking instrumental. Mm -hmm. Nothing else. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, that's first, that'd be easy. Yeah. Made a big long track and wish played that little Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Well, we're going to go to a commercial, and uh, we'll be right back right after this and uh, talk some more. La Pagada Mexican Restaurant, 441 North Duncan Bypass, Union, South Carolina, 864-429-4043. La Pagada, your family Mexican restaurants, has appetizers, child's plates, salads and soups, sandwiches, and desserts. Sizzling fajitas, Texas fajitas, shrimp fajitas. Also, they have great chicken, polo asado, chicken tenders, polo loco, and many more. If you like seafood, they have that also, fish tacos, shrimp cocktail. They have many combinations that you can choose from in different price range. Matter of fact, they have 35 different ones. If you're a vegetarian, that's right, they can come accommodate you also. Lunch menu, they have the Speedy Gonzales and about 13 others that you can make a combination with. That's La Fagada. La Fagada Mexican Restaurant, 
441 North Duncan Bypass and Union, South Carolina, 429-4043. All right, we're back. And we're talking to the guys at Pitts Music Studio, yeah. Chandler, Randy, Ricky, and you're going to have to say your name. <laughs> Come on. There you go. So they heard you. <laughs> He's a shy one in the bunch, I believe. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, now, tell people where you're located at. How um, they can find you, even uh, your here, uh, okay. Facebook and everything like that. Let, let people know. Okay. Um, where we are, um, the studio is located here at 127 East Main Street, Clinton, South Carolina. Um, you can um, follow follow us on our Facebook page at Pitts Music Studio. Um, do we have any more social medias? Mm -hmm. Well, right now we only just have the Facebook social media, but you can follow us on Facebook. Yeah, and um, the address is 127 East Main Street, Clinton, South Carolina. Okay, mm -hmm. so they can uh, just come by. You got certain hours, or do they? Um, the um, base hours um, is from like 11 to 6 in right. the evening. But we are here late because a lot of studio time, you know, some love um, studio time like towards the evening into the early part of the night. Yeah. But um, and the kids don't, don't get out of school till like three. Three, so, so yeah. we have a lot of three mm -hmm. late evening. Things. Yeah. Oh, okay. But the normal hours is around like from eleven um, to six, or maybe ten to six. Oh. Mm -hmm. What? Well, you know, in, in the music business, and uh, that you have. Uh, here it's it's not a nine to five right uh, job it's, right uh, it's because you got weekends you've got uh, late evenings and yes. I can imagine that uh, uh, some of the time that you you get because you can't put a time so okay we're gonna do this in ten minutes <laughs> right minutes. right yeah. Uh, it, Especially it takes, on studio work, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. you don't put a time. Right now, what is what is what? Who is the uh, if you want to name the person, uh, the artist that you had is just really has taken off and is really doing excellent, uh, um, getting booked and getting uh, CDs made. Uh, like I said, I don't know if you make CDs now anymore or not. It just uh, Okay, well, I'm going to let Chandler talk about him, but we do have an upcoming artist. Um, she's Apostle Linda Cohen. Um, she's actually um, doing a project, and so we're actually working on her project right now. But we just finished a project. I'm going to get Chandler to talk about just um, Leah. Yeah, we we have an artist that's, can't, that's come in. He's been, he's been in different studios from, like, Atlanta, from up the road and stuff. So he's came in and done a lot of promoting and putting in a lot of time here into making the music that he does and mm -hmm. i feel like he he has it he got his full potential and he's gifted with it so wow. he has did an ep everything and he actually did a live show here yeah um it was in february yeah oh wow he did a live live show he um did a couple of songs live so. Well, that's great. Mm -hmm. And he just did he do it in your studio here, or was it? Yeah, here? it was here. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yes, he did. Yeah, I, I love artists that that do this. Uh, I got a friend of mine out of Greenville, Steve Ager, mm -hmm. and uh, he wrote a song about Greenville, mm -hmm. and he wrote another one about Clemson. Uh, but the Greenville one went wild over it, mm -hmm. and uh, they paid him on Jack Roper, they paid him on Channel Seven, they paid him on several different stations there just because of some of the kids were even singing some of his songs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And he just kind of hit that that mark right there. Mm -hmm. and, and and I love that that when artists gives back to the community. Uh, matter of fact, mm -hmm. he even has uh, yard concerts mm -hmm. and has like a hundred people show up and park across the street, down the street, park a free concert. Mm -hmm. And to me, that, that you can't get better promotion than that. Right, and, right. And, and wow. Now, have you ever thought about uh, where people talk about uh, label signing, mm -hmm. uh, making your own label, mm -hmm. 
Um, I do have that in the making as well. I have a website up going that's under PM Records, and that's a label that we're making out of the studio to where, like, where we're going to be able to sign artists over and they do their work here and we do the promotion and all the background effects for it. Wow, that's great. You guys are doing it all. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I was thinking about that just a few minutes ago uh, because I think about some of the older uh, movies and older uh, things I've watched as far as the music goes where they have always signed the label on there. Mm -hmm. And I always wondered, well, how they get the label, you know? Uh, and so you have them sign a contract, mm -hmm. and so mm -hmm. you're uh, responsible for the promotions of it and and also percentages and things like that. Mm -hmm. well, mm -hmm. See, y'all doing all the work. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not mm -hmm. saying their Fair job enough. is easy, but, uh, but, but but that's great. Yeah. Uh, so I encourage anyone that's that wants to come here for voice to learn how to play different instruments, mm -hmm. yeah. here's an opportunity. And, and the, like I said, and the prices are phenomenal. If they, yes. uh, they go on your Facebook page, they can see the prices. You're, you're very open with that. Mm -hmm. And because uh, and most time you you look and there's no price. Yes. Immediately you think in your mind, I can't afford this. You can't afford it, right. Mm -hmm. They can afford this. Yeah. This is yeah. great. Yeah. You also rent the studio time, correct? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. And does that depend on what they want to do as far as in the studio or mm -hmm. is it uh, just one thing or how, how um, do you explain them about that? studio time? So as far as studio time, people, some people like to come get like an hour or two hour session, but sometimes the hours go overboard because of the work that they're doing. So that's, that's yeah. pretty much with it. Now, what do they do with that time? Are they, are they coming in and just singing or they maybe playing and singing or either uh, either they could be writing their music while they're in here listening to it and getting the feel then when they finally catch something to it they go in the booth and just record it it's like a a gathering and a learning experience and oh, okay. putting it to action experience mm -hmm. okay now have any of you besides the uh, Another channel has written songs. Um, yes, I've, I've written several songs. Um, yeah, I'm a songwriter as, okay. as well. So, w yeah. what are some of the songs that you've written? That well, um, the the last song I wrote, the title was um, name is God's Truth. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, so I'm actually working on um, uh, two songs now. So. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Now, when you uh, to me, writing songs it has to be difficult because yeah. it's, it's got to tell a story. Uh, to me, it does, mm -hmm. and it's got to have some rhythm and some, you know, and yes. almost like a poem, poetry, or whatever mm -hmm. like that. How do you come up after you write it? How, how do, you, do you put the the, the, the lyrics, the music? Do, do you vision that when you're writing this, or? You actually, sometimes you can write um, music, you can just write the lyrics and then you just think about it and you're thinking about how you want it to go. Or you can create a piece of music and you can just listen at the music and think about what lyrics you want to put with it. So it's just like a combination of things, you know, um, you can um, start with music or you can just start with the lyrics and then you just put it together. Um, it gets difficult sometimes because um, you don't want to mock anyone else right. that meaning listening at someone else's music and kind of doing it, doing it the same. You kind of want to create your own sound. Well, so, I think uh, that's kind of difficult yeah, for it you is. because you, you, every one of you listen to music all yes. day mm -hmm. long and you hear all these different styles of music. Mm -hmm. So that has to be it's hard hard to do. Yeah. Now, do you uh, are you do you sit somewhere or are you going somewhere and you get some lyrics in your Mind, you write it down, or yes, yes. like different yeah. times of the different times of the day, something to come to you, and you be like, okay, that's that's the next line of my song. You need to write it down, you know. And I could be at work and on the clock and sitting there listening to music and writing at the same time while I'm at work. Yeah, yeah. so it comes to you at different times. You can be mm -hmm. sleep at night, and you can wake up in the middle of the night to get some work or something, and a line of music will come to you, a lyric, something about the story that you're going to tell in the song that you're writing. 
That's what the channel was talking about. He doesn't <laughs> sleep much, and sometimes he doesn't mind in the yeah. middle of the night. I, I, I could see that. Yeah. Uh, now, when, when you put, like, you, you write something down, and you got a line there, you put it down, and then something else comes up, mm. and you, you're kind of putting it all together, not really knowing what you're going to have mm -hmm. the whole song about, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah, and I do want to say gospel music. Um, you would, um, you can write songs like with scriptures, you know, mm -hmm. um, because gospel music actually um, speak of the Bible, you know. So, um, you know, it's pretty easy to write gospel music sometimes because you can take your favorite scripture or some scriptures that you know, and you can write music. Right, mm -hmm. and I've heard some like that it was was written from almost uh, like you know Psalms uh, uh, ninety eight. Mm -hmm. or, uh, the Lord's Prayer, even. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and you've heard different versions there. Yes. And uh, but but what I found a lot of times in different songs, especially if I have to watch what I put on, uh, it's like the uh, the clips today mm -hmm. uh, in Aquarius, and I had to get a cover song instead mm -hmm. of the original because of copyright. Yes. I couldn't mm -hmm. use that. Yes. And uh, and and that's what it's difficult to do even mm -hmm. in the Christian music and Christmas music yeah. it's like it's so much copyright even Happy Birthday got a copyright yes <laughs> and, yes so and, uh, when you write your music do you do you get a copyright you all have to copyright it yes sir okay is that, is that difficult to do uh, because um, people might want to do that and just don't have not a clue how to do it yeah um, do you know more about copywriting do you want to um I know as far as with copyright you have to get like a EIN number right. to make sure everything is in your hands and not like what well, somebody can steal it or anything or use mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. Right, because you've got so many people that will take that and mm -hmm. take yeah. it as their own, mm -hmm. uh, especially if you write something put, different with it. You know. Put it on the internet or something, you yeah. know, on YouTube or whatever, and then they'll get snatch it right up. Mm -hmm. uh, but I just kind of was kind of wondering how in the writing process, uh, copyright and all that has to blend together because it's people just don't think it's, it's not as easy as you think it is mm -hmm. and you don't mm -hmm. want to spend all your time writing a song and for someone to snatch it up and right right and, and, take it. <clears throat> uh, and, and I understand copyright laws because, in a sense yeah, because laws. you know you work hard for that song right you just don't want someone to take it and use it to make money off of something that you work so hard for. right right so, man it's uh yeah, I'm glad you guys are in this because mm -hmm. it's it's you have your plate full every day, mm -hmm. and to me, the to me the best part is is bringing the kids in. Yes, that, that's, yeah. that, that's that's the best part of yes. this. Yeah. And now, what do you got planned in the future? What what's some things that you're thinking about doing? Uh, progressing ahead and doing more. I know you got a lot to keep doing yeah. now. But yeah. what are some of the ideas maybe you've been bouncing around maybe uh, that that would enhance Pitt's music? Um, well, um, one vision that I have, um, this building above us um, is a, a classrooms, office space. So my next vision is to be able to get the office space above us you know um it's a door next to us that take you upstairs above us okay. and just turn it into a music school oh, um, okay. you know you know the, um, teach piano lessons um get other uh, teachers to come in you know uh, musicians or vocal trainers come in and just just make it big right mm -hmm. well, that'd yeah. be great yes but well, you know and you know yourself using the digital uh on your computers, mm -hmm. doing all the things like that, teaching other kids how to do them. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. You know, they, they think just you come in, just strum or whatever like that, but it's more to it. Like when you're uh, setting up someone to sing, you're doing all the mixing and stuff, you do it digitally. Mm -hmm. A lot of kids, a lot of them does not know that, you know, how to do that. To take mm -hmm. skills to do it, yeah, but it's yeah. also something that you to can teach, teach as well. Yeah. Right. So. And I think it's Apple had a thing out, Band? Band Lab. 
Yeah. Band Lab, yeah. Mm -hmm. Band Lab is something, no, you must be talking about Garage Band. Garage, garage Band, that's yeah. right. Garage but band. band Lab is another app that people use to record themselves and make beats and stuff onto. Yeah. Okay. Well, see, that's kind of like a beginner start, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, it's like a handheld studio, basically. Right, <laughs> yeah. right. It's nothing like what you do here, of course. <laughs> you mm -hmm. got to have a lot more than that. Yeah. Uh, now, we're getting close to our end of time, and mm -hmm. I want to ask each one of you, uh, what advice you've got for someone that's coming up and wanting to be a musician? and Sometimes they get the idea that, well, oh, I sing pretty good. I just, I'll just go up, blow them off the chart, and just go and do a lot of stuff. What is some advice that the challenge that you can give someone that's just starting out and, and wants to get into the music business? Um, my advice that I would give is if you feel like you're capable of doing it and want to pursue and doing it, just do it. Don't be. Don't be afraid of what other people have to say about what you're doing and how you're doing it. You have to do this for yourself and always keep faith. Mm -hmm. that, 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 that's some good advice there because mm -hmm. a lot of people will kind of, if someone says one thing negative, it can right. that, that could ruin their mm -hmm. spirit with it. But Yeah, and um, my advice is kind of the same and I want to use one of my vocal um, students as an example. Um, she, she started vocal training maybe like um, a month ago and she told me her story. She had wanted to sing her whole life and back when she was in elementary school, um, someone told her that you can't sing, you can't do this, you can't do that and she carried that her whole life. And then so um, now she's taking vocal training under me and so my advice um, never, never let anyone discourage you about a dream that you have, you know, and if you have a dream, pursue that dream, you know, you know, and, um, yeah, just, just go, just go ahead and pursue that dream, you know, because if you don't pursue your dream, then it'll eat away at you, you know, for the rest of your life. If you have a gift, if you have a talent, you need to go ahead and Pursue your dream and your talent, and I am one that will encourage you and give you confidence. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it, it's, it's easy to put someone down trying to do something because mm -hmm. usually that right. person wants to do it themselves. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. 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 Rick, what about you? Um, my advice is just follow your dreams yeah. and don't you know don't be shy and don't worry about what other people might say right. you know a lot of people want to do music but they be like well I don't, I don't want nobody to see me I'm, I'm I'm embarrassed they might say this they might say this but my advice is just follow your dreams and don't be scared to come and chase your dream that's right mm -hmm. yeah that's just, right just, just get up and do it mm -hmm. and that's, that's not you know hard that uh to really do. I mean, you just got to have confidence in yourself and it's up to us and you know, as mentors to, to do that. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that, that's some good advice. And mm -hmm. well, we, we're at our hour. We're at the top of the hour. We're about pretty quick. Mm -hmm. And yes, you guys have some great advice. And uh, like I said, uh, this is a beautiful studio you have here. And I think you are on the right track. All your irons in the fire helping the that these youth mm -hmm. uh, come in, I just that that's that's a plus from what you know. You're not just looking at it as a total business, right. but you're looking at it as a community mm -hmm. to help others. Yeah, mm -hmm. right. and I love that. Well, we're at the end of the hour, and mm -hmm. we appreciate you letting me come into your studio. Thank you so much. And mm -hmm. this was a great. Like I said, I've learned a bunch, <laughs> and I thought I knew everything. Of course, my wife said that, <laughs> but uh, but really, really, if uh, you need things, just uh, you know, if you have a big concert, like just give me a call or something, and mm -hmm. uh, if you have something special, uh, be glad to, to stream it or whatever like that to help okay. you okay. out there. I do that a lot, also. And thank you. And that's part of helping the community. Yeah, we really appreciate. It. Thank you. Well, I'm Jerry McKee, and thank you for watching. Uh, Prime time, with Jerry McKee. Next week. We're going to talk a little bit about health and how you're going to live healthy 
and we've got a guest coming on that's going to uh, enlighten you on some good ways to do that. Well, I'm Jerry McKee, and thank you for watching Prime Time with 